Welcome back. In the previous lecture, we've added a new HMI device to our TIA project and we've set up the communication between the HMI device and our PLC. In this lecture, we're going to add HMI tags to our application. It's going to be really exciting because I'm going to show you guys a method of adding tags that not a lot of people know and that will save you heaps of time. So let's get started. The tags that we're going to add to our HMI application will be tags from our existing PLC application, PLC Refill. Our refill sample application on which this PLC program is based will be explained in detail in the next lecture. For this lecture, the content and functionality of the PLC program is not important. The main focus here is on adding PLC tags to our HMI application. So let's have a quick look at the data, the tags of our PLC application. For this PLC program here, I have created a data block for equipment modules and another data block for machine modules. If we open, for example, this DB equipment here, you can see that we have defined a tag data structure for a supply module and a tag data structure for a refill process one and a refill process two module. It's the tags from these data structures that we're going to add to our HMI application. Okay, so let's go and add some tags. All tags in a TIA portal HMI application are situated in the tree structure on the left under the group HMI tags. To create structure and overview in all of your tags, TIA portal lets you create tag groups. So now we're going to start here by adding a group for our PLC tags. In a later lecture, we're going to create a group as well for local HMI tags, but for now we're just going to add our PLC tags. So right click on HMI tags and select add new group. We'll call this group PLC tags. Now we are going to group our equipment tags in one tag table and our machine tags in a second tag table. So we right click on the group and we select add new tag table. We'll call this one PLC equipment tags. By the way, the fastest way of renaming something in TIA portal is by pressing F2. Now we copy paste this tag table by pressing Ctrl C followed by Ctrl V. The second tag table we'll call PLC machine tags. Let's start by adding tags to our equipment tag table. We open up the equipment tag table by double clicking on the table. As expected, the tag table is empty. No tags have been created yet. I will start by showing you the normal way of adding tags. Under the tab PLC tag, we are going to select the PLC tag that we would like to add. So by clicking here on the three dots in the right corner, we get to select which tag to add. We are going to add tags from our equipment data block. So we open up our program blocks followed by our global data. Now that we have located our DB equipment, let's add some tags from our supply data structure. So as an example, I'll add these four status tags here, valve status, tank low level, valve open and faulted. There we go. So we've added these four status tags to our equipment tag table. You can see that these tags only have generic names so far. HMI tag one, HMI tag two, HMI tag three, and HMI tag four. You can rename these tags manually, that's perfectly okay, but I'll show you a way that's faster. First, we select all the tags in our table by pressing Ctrl A. Now that all our tags have been selected, we are going to synchronize these HMI tags with the corresponding PLC tags. We do this by pressing on the little icon here in the top bar. We are going to synchronize PLC tags with WinCC tags if the path of the PLC tag matches, so we leave the setting as it is. What's important here is that we are going to replace the WinCC tag name with the PLC tag name. Now when we press synchronize, you can see that our HMI tags have received names corresponding to the PLC tag names. Easy, no? So this obviously saves a lot of time when assigning names to your HMI tags. Now let's have a closer look at an HMI tag. Let's take for example the valve state tag and let's look at the properties. Interesting here are the settings of the tag. 
Under settings, we can define both the acquisition mode of the tag and the acquisition cycle. The acquisition mode defines how a tag value is updated in runtime, and the acquisition cycle determines the update rate of a tag during runtime. For the acquisition mode, the default setting is cyclic in operation. This means that the HMI tag value is cyclically updated only when the tag is in use on the screen. This is the default setting because it saves system resources. Normally, there is no use in updating tag values to an HMI if the user is not actively looking at the tag value on the screen. With the cyclic continuous acquisition mode, the tag is updated cyclically all the time. This makes sense, for example, when you have tags that need to be updated in the background. Tags that are part of a PID control are a good example of this. If you, for example, plot a temperature with an actual value and a set point on a graph on the HMI, you would not want the plotting values to freeze as soon as you leave that screen, right? So a cyclic continuous acquisition mode would be a good fit here for the actual value and set point. The last acquisition mode is on demand. This means that an active command has to be issued in order for the tag value to be updated. So you basically have to update the tag value manually. Personally, I have never used this type of acquisition mode, but there are probably situations where only a manual update of a tag value is desired, and then this mode would be the right setting for the tag. Now, if your tag's acquisition mode is set to cyclic in operation or cyclic on demand, you can then use the acquisition cycle to define the update rate for the tag. The default update rate is one second, and this fits for most cases. If you have a tag that you would like to update at a slower or a faster rate, you can change the acquisition cycle here. We can select, for example, a 100 milliseconds update rate. This is, by the way, the fastest update rate possible. Keep that in mind. So that's it for the settings of an HMI tag. Now that I have shown you the normal, standard way to add individual tags to an HMI application, I'm going to share with you a very cool feature in TIA Portal. Not only can you add single tags to a tag table, but you can also add a whole tag data structure. By adding complete tag data structures, you greatly increase your speed and efficiency when adding tags to an HMI application. Let's first delete these four individual tags here, and let's add a tag data structure instead. So we select the first row of the PLC tag tab, and we click on our data block DB Equipment. Now on the right side here, our data structures for supply and refill process one and two are shown. Now by double clicking on the supply data structure, we add the complete supply data structure in one go to our tag table. Pretty awesome, right? Let's do the same for our other data structures. So we select our refill process one data structure and our refill process two data structure. Now we rename the HMI tags by synchronizing to the PLC. And there you go. We have added all the tags of our equipment modules in no time. Now these data structures are relatively small. But what if you have a PLC application with large data structures? Can you imagine how much time it would take to map every tag individually? Using this smart method here, you really save a lot of time which makes you create applications faster, more structured and efficient, and in the end, well, make you a better application builder. Now, by opening a tag data structure, for example, the supply structure, you can see that all our tags from the data structure are present here. For each tag within the structure, we can set the acquisition mode individually. The only setting that you cannot set individually is the acquisition cycle. You can only define the acquisition cycle for the whole tag data structure in our case, one second. In 99% of cases out there, this is not a problem. So I would still highly recommend adding complete tag data structures instead of mapping each tag individually. Now that we have added our equipment tags to our equipment tag table, let's go and add our machine tags to the machine tag table. So we open up the machine tag table and we select the data structures for our machine modules, which in our sample application is only one module, the state handler. We synchronize to get our name assigned. And we're done. 
all the tags of our machine state handler data structure have been added. Before we conclude this lecture, just a quick side note here concerning data communication between a PLC and an HMI in TIA portal. My personal recommendation to you is to only map tags from data blocks inside a TIA portal HMI application. TIA portal's preferred way of communicating data between a PLC and an HMI is through data blocks. So why is this? The reason for this is that data blocks are hardware independent where inputs and output tags or memory tags are hardware dependent. They can vary depending on which PLC type you choose or which input output modules you assign to your PLC. To keep your application universal and hardware independent, make it a priority and a habit to work with data blocks both in your PLC and your HMI applications. If you still want to visualize, for example, input or output tags on your HMI, I would recommend to write a small piece of PLC code that copies your input and output tags to data block tags and then use these data block tags in your HMI. Well, this leads us to the end of this lecture. In this lecture, we have first structured HMI tags using groups and tag tables. Afterwards, I have shown you a very efficient way to map complete tag data structures to your HMI application. For your reading pleasure, I have added a downloadable PDF to the resource section of this lecture containing best practices when working with tags in a TIA portal HMI application. I hope you've enjoyed this lecture and are looking forward to the next one, where I'm going to give you a quick overview of the sample application used in this course. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next lecture.